The Brisbane Lions Football Club has a rich history that can be traced back to the formation of the Melbourne-based Fitzroy Football Club in 1883 at the Brunswick Hotel. Fitzroy quickly established themselves as a successful club in the Victorian Football Association, winning the VAFA Premiership in 1895. They were also one of the eight clubs that formed the Victorian Football League in 1897, where they continued to be a powerhouse, winning a total of eight premierships. Fitzroy had a strong and consistent performance throughout the early days of the VFL, winning the premierships of 1898, 1899, 1904, 1905, 1913, 1916 and 1922. This success was led by a number of key players with Hayden Bunton Sr. winning three Brownlow medals and two Club Best and Fairest medals and other notable players who also went on to win the prestigious Brownlow Award included Wilfred Smallhorn, Dinny Ryan, Alan Ruthven, Kevin Murray and Bernie Quinlan. Fitzroy had a solid fan base and was known for consistently drawing large crowds to their home at the Brunswick Street Oval in Edinburgh Gardens. In 1957, the club changed its nickname from the Gorillas to the Lions. Despite their early success, during the 1960s, the club faced financial struggles. This struggle was exacerbated by the fact that Fitzroy was evicted from its home ground of Brunswick Street Oval in 1965, which led to a sustained period of poor on-field performance and financial losses. Despite a resurgence in the 80s, when the Fitzroy Lions made the finals four times under the coaching of Robert Walls and David Parkin, and the playing group of 1981, Brownlow medalist Bernie Quinlan, Ron Alexander, Gary Wilson, Gary Pert, and Paul Ruse, the club's financial situation was still perilous. The VFL's plan to move or merge a struggling Fitzroy to Brisbane predated the Brisbane Bears, and negotiations between the league and the club began in 1986, with the playing group voting for a move to Brisbane. However, Fitzroy resisted the move despite significant incentives, and in response, the VFL made the decision to cut any further financial assistance to the club, which contributed to its ultimate demise. By the start of the 1996 season, they were almost at the end of their financial tether. With no home ground, back-to-back -back wooden spoons, and their future under a cloud, Fitzroy began to consider options for survival. The Brisbane Bears were born in 1987 and initially played home matches at Carrara Stadium on the Gold Coast. In its early days, the club was uncompetitive on the field and struggled to shake the derisive tags, which included the Carrara Koalas in reference to the Gold Coast home and the somewhat tame marsupial and the Bad News Bears. After the collapse of the business empire belonging to Bears Deputy Chairman Christopher Scase and the resignation of Chairman Paul Cronin, the club was taken over by the AFL and resold to Gold Coast businessman Ruben Palaman. Off-field, Palaman was losing millions of dollars annually on the club and at one point in 1991 told Bears coach Robert Walls that he was closing it down. The Bears would go on to finish last in 1990 and 1991. To survive, the Bears experimented with playing matches at the Gabba in Brisbane in 1991, moving all home matches to the venue ahead of the 1993 season. As part of the club's move to the Gabba, Perlman agreed to release the Bears from private ownership and revert to a traditional club structure in which the club's members were able to elect the board. Membership and attendances instantly tripled now that the club was finally playing in their home city of Brisbane. The club improved slightly, reaching finals in 1995 and 1996. However, their closest opportunity to reach the grand final was in 1996, their last year in the competition, when they lost to North Melbourne in the preliminary final. As mentioned before, Fitzroy's financial struggles and the need for a solution that would ensure the sustainability of the club led to the proposed merger between Fitzroy and the Bears. Despite initial resistance, the merger was eventually agreed upon in 1996, creating the Brisbane Lions Football Club. The new club inherited Fitzroy's colours, maroon and blue, and the Lion emblem, paying homage to the rich history and legacy of the Fitzroy Football Club. The merger, however, was not without its challenges. The newly formed Brisbane Lions 
had a difficult start to their first season with a lack of support and poor performances on the field. However, the team gradually improved each year, finishing higher and higher in the league standings. 1996 saw the club make the top eight in their first season since merging. However, were smashed by the minor premiers St Kilda by 46 points. 1998 was a big step back as the Lions finished last with only five wins. Before the season began, the club was considered a genuine premiership contender, but after losing its first five games and facing various crises, it ended with a surprising wooden spoon. Coach John Norley was replaced by Roger Merritt, but after only one win in the final eight games, Merritt was also let go. In 1999, former Hawthorne champion Lee Matthews was brought in to turn things around. Matthews had previously coached Collingwood in the 1990 Premiership, worked in media, and led the Victorian State of Origin and Australia's 1998 combined rules team in Ireland. Matthews made an immediate impact. Tony Shaw, who won the Norm Smith medal in Collingwood's 1990 Premiership, noted two major aspects of Matthews' coaching style. The focus on details such as diet, rest, and alcohol intake, and the courage to make decisions even if not everyone agreed. Between the earlier comments and Matthews taking over at Brisbane, his coaching style evolved, but the two central factors remained. In 1999, the Lions were fitter and better prepared than ever before. Some of Matthews' decisions, such as moving Jason Akamanis and Justin Lepich from the forward lines to defence, initially seemed unconventional, but ended up as inspired choices. Both players had their best seasons, earning AFL All-Australian honours and sharing the club's best and fairest award. Under Matthews, the Lions played with a new level of aggression and intimidation, making them significantly more successful on the road. The team was not made up of thugs, but had a talented and attractive midfield with players like Michael Voss, Sean Hart, Nigel Lappin, Simon Black, and Marcus Ashcroft. Matthews also developed clever set plays to disorient the opposition. The Lions were a far cry from the disorganized team that struggled the previous season, opening the 1999 season with a dominating victory over St Kilda and making a strong run to the final. They had notable wins against Fremantle, where they scored 21 goals in the first half, as well as wins over the Power and the Crows, and a comfortable win over Collingwood in Collingwood's last game at Victoria Park. The Lions, with a winning percentage of 144.9%, the best in the league since 1992, were optimistic about their chances in the finals. Their convincing victories over Carlton by 73 points in the qualifying final and Western Bulldogs by 53 points in the semi-final at the Gabba only boosted their confidence. However, the Kangaroos proved too strong in the preliminary final at the MCG. It became evident that more than just a couple of ingredients were missing with key players such as Richard Champion, Craig Lambert, and Adam Huskers retiring during the 2000 season. The Lions were also hindered by the absence of Clark Keating, their top ruckman, who missed the entire season with a severe knee injury, and other players such as Brad Scott, Matthew Kennedy, Steve Lawrence, and Simon Black, who missed several games. The Lions only managed 12 wins and made it to the finals in sixth place, lacking the strength and fluidity they had displayed the previous year. However, a 15-20, 110 to 10-16, 76 elimination final defeat of the Western Bulldogs gave hope. But the following week, they were crushed by Carlton with an 82-point loss in Melbourne. To address their biggest weakness, defense, Matthews brought in two important recruits during the offseason. Mel Michael from Collingwood and Martin Pike from the Kangaroos. Both were experienced and talented backmen, with Pike bringing valuable experience as a member of the 1999 Premiership winning Kangaroos team. In 2001, the Lions were close to perfection, winning their final 13 home and away games to finish second behind Essendon based on percentage. Their performance in the finals was even stronger, comfortably defeating Port Adelaide in a low scoring battle. Brisbane defeated Richmond by 68 points in the second qualifying final to reach their first ever grand final. In the grand final, Brisbane faced reigning premiers Essendon. The two teams had strong players in the midfield, with Brisbane relying on a pack of dominant runners, including 2001 Brownlow medalist Jason Akamanis, captain Michael Voss, Simon Black and Nigel Lappin, who helped them win 15 matches in a row. 
Essendon with players like James Hurd, Blake Carousella, Chris Heffernan, and Jason Johnson had to control the midfield to win. The first half was competitive, with Essendon leading by 20 points at half time. But a goal by Alastair Lynch right before the half time siren boosted Brisbane's confidence. In the second half, it was, or so said by many of the Brisbane players after the game, a crucial goal, for they felt a 14 point lead was manageable. And importantly, they had enormous confidence that they were a fitter and stronger side than Essendon. They were convinced of being able to outrun the reigning premiers, and they did just that. The second half saw Brisbane with Voss, eventual Norm Smith medalist, Sean Hart, and Nigel Lappin unstoppable forces for the Lions, defeating the Bombers and winning their inaugural premiership since their merge in 1997. The final scores were Brisbane 15-18-108 to Essendon 12-10-82. Two goals for it. They've done it. He's got the ball in his hands, Bruce. A bit of history here. Lee Matthews has been to the top of the mountain for a second time as coach. Once at Collingwood. And now he's done the impossible. Brisbane have won the premiership. In 2002, Brisbane's journey to win consecutive flags appeared to be straightforward. But this was not the case. Despite several moments of doubt, such as their loss to Melbourne in round 14 and defeats to both Adelaide teams, in the finals, the 2002 Lions had an aura of inevitability about them. This all changed on grand final day. In 2001, the grand final between Brisbane and Essendon was expected to be a close match, with both teams having equal chances of winning. But in 2002, it was widely believed that Brisbane's grand final opponents, Collingwood, were simply there for the experience. Brisbane was considered to be far superior to Collingwood in terms of player strength, unlike the previous year. The unpredictable Melbourne weather did not work in Brisbane's favour, as heavy rain made the playing surface slippery and the ball greasy, which favoured Collingwood's style of play. From the beginning of the game, it was evident that Brisbane would have a difficult time. Collingwood's aggressive style of play, similar to what the Lions had used effectively in the past, made it difficult for Brisbane to play their game. Collingwood's first goal, scored by Anthony Rocker at the 26 minute mark, was the only major of the first quarter, making it the lowest scoring first quarter in a grand final in 75 years. Brisbane's first goal of the game was scored five minutes into the second quarter and marked the start of the Lions' surge. However, the intense pressure from Collingwood caused Brisbane to be uncharacteristically wasteful in front of the goal. Despite adding four goals and eight points to Collingwood's three straight, Brisbane only led by eight points at a half time. Many people believed that Brisbane's supposed superior fitness would give them an advantage in the second half. But Collingwood continued to apply pressure and actually outscored the Lions four goals six to four goals two in the third quarter, appearing to be the stronger team. The last quarter was an intense struggle with Collingwood taking the lead 11 minutes in with a beautiful check side goal from Josh Fraser. With heavy rain now falling, scoring became more difficult. It was at this point that the Lions finally played at the level their supporters expected. Three minutes after Fraser's goal, Alistair Lynch scored a goal from a controversial free kick, putting Brisbane back in the lead. With Michael Voss playing with inspiration, the Lions continued to push forward in the face of significant pressure from Collingwood. After 24 minutes, Jason Akamanis, who had been limited by injury all day, snapped a brilliant six-pointer over his head, giving the Lions some breathing room. In the final minutes, Brisbane kept position and slowed down the play to win the game 10-15-75 to 9-12-66. The game was the most closely fought grand final since 1989 and confirmed the Brisbane Lions as one of the greatest teams of the modern era. Despite facing challenges in the following season with injuries to key players and poor form resulting in the worst results since the wooden spoon year of 1998, the Lions proved to be champions when it mattered most. In 2003, after narrowly securing a double chance, the Lions faced a setback with a 15-point loss to Collingwood in the qualifying final. However, they were able to bounce back and perform exceptionally well over the next three weeks. They dominated their opponents, Adelaide, Sydney and Collingwood with ease, scoring wins of 42 points, 44 points and 50 points respectively. The Lions midfield featuring Akamanis, Voss, Black and others were tireless and their key position players, including Lepic and Lynch, were outstanding. The idea that Brisbane was the greatest team in the history of AFL was becoming increasingly difficult to dismiss. In Here it is! The Brisbane Lions have done it! The Hawks, the Bombers, the Crows, 
They couldn't do it in the 80s and the 90s, but the Lions have gone back to back to back to become the greatest side of the modern era. They are football's invincibles. Win, 2004, the Lions had the chance to solidify their greatness as they took part in their fourth consecutive grand final, this time against Port Adelaide. Although they fought valiantly, especially during the second term, they fell 40 points behind, and the dream of being the greatest team came to a temporary halt. In the following years, the Lions struggled with mediocre performances in 2005, 2006 and 2007. However, as the population in the state of Queensland grows, it becomes increasingly important to the overall health of Australian football. The Brisbane Football Club, as the premier representation of Queensland football, has established a significant presence in a region that is traditionally a rugby stronghold. The club's continued success will have positive impact on the game, not only in their home state, but across the entire country. With the Lions showing strong likelihood of recurring success in the foreseeable future, their importance to the future of Australian football cannot be overstated.